Vignette 2. Darrowwood Offensive. In the spring and summer of 1984, the Soviet forces stepped up their attacks on Mujahideen hideouts and mobile bases in the three adjoining provinces of Kandahar, Helmand, and Oruzgan. The Soviets also intensified their efforts to intercept Mujahideen supply convoys coming through the mountains from Pakistan. In the fall, a number of major Mujahideen commanders in these provinces decided to set up a regional supply base in Uruzgan Mountains that could support Mujahideen units deployed in the area. Darawood District, located in Uruzgan Province, seemed to be a suitable place for the supply base. It is an oasis in the mountains in the upper Helmand Valley. It is easy to defend and it is conveniently located between the three provinces. Map 7-2, Darawood. The Darawood district capital of Darawood was garrisoned by some 500 government militia who manned security outposts around the town. They were supplied by air force since the town was blockaded by the local Mujahideen who controlled all the roads leading into the town. The Mujahideen council decided to attack the government enclave, dislodge the militia, and consolidate control over the entire valley. To do this, however, they first had to negotiate a truce between rival groups in the region to ensure their full cooperation during the upcoming operation. Two months before the action, Mujahideen delegations from Kandahar and Helmand mediated such a truce. In October, Mujahideen forces from Kandahar under Mula Mulong, Faisullah, and other leaders joined a contingent of Helmand Mujahideen commanded by the late Nasim Akhmud Zada the leading resistance figure in Helmand province. Haji Asudula and some Mujahideen fighters from Uruzgan and Bagran areas joined the attacking force. This force eventually numbered over 1,000 men. The Mujahideen force moved along different approaches to Darawood and surrounded the government positions in the area. A 300-man detachment sealed off the main approach to Darawood from the south along the Helmand River. Another 100-man detachment deployed to the southeast to cover the kotal e murcha the Murcha Pass, and mine its road. About 500 fighters deployed around the district center, while the rest were engaged in full-time logistic support. The siege lasted 45 days, while the Mujahideen gradually tightened the noose around the militia positions. The Mujahideen kept only one-third of the fighters on the front line at any one time. The rest were either in reserve or involved in logistic service. The frontline fighters were relieved every 24 hours. The Soviets and DRA supported the Darawood garrison with daily airstrikes on Mujahideen positions to check their advance. They would run two or three attack missions daily using fighter bombers and helicopter gunships. In the meantime, the Soviet DRA command assembled ground forces from Kandahar and Shindand to relieve the embattled militia at Darawood. However, it took the enemy weeks before he was ready to move large columns of infantry and tanks to the mountainous battlefield. One day, a Mujahideen gun crew on a ZGU-1 anti-aircraft heavy machine gun shot down one of a pair of Soviet fighter bombers flying over Darawood. The plane burst into flames and fell in the Helmand River. The pilot, said to be a high-ranking officer, bailed out and landed five to six kilometers from the nearest Mujahideen position. The other fighters circled the area and flew away apparently after pinpointing the crash site of the fallen plane. A seven-man Mujahideen team under Mullah Juma Khan sent to capture the pilot. By the time the Mujahideen reached the pilot, he had moved to a position from which he could fire his AK-74 at the advancing resistance fighters. The Mujahideen tried to capture the pilot alive. While they were preparing to try and capture him, a swarm of transport helicopters and helicopter gunships flew over the Kotali Murcha Pass from Kandahar and began gun runs against the Mujahideen positions. Two helicopters hovered over the crash site. One hovered about 500 meters from the ground and lowered a ladder. The Soviet pilot jumped up from his hideout and started climbing up the ladder. Seeing that the Soviet pilot was escaping, the Mujahideen opened fire and killed the pilot and damaged the helicopter. The helicopter tried to escape, but crashed about three kilometers away. 
This incident triggered increased Soviet air activity as they tried to soften up the area for the upcoming attack by ground forces moving on two axes to Darawood. One column was approaching along the Helmand River from Kajaki Dam and the other from Kakrez across the Kotali Mercha Pass. For three days, Soviet airstrikes continued uninterrupted from dawn till dusk. However, the Mujahideen suffered fewer casualties than the militiamen who sustained losses from both collateral damage and friendly fire. Following three days of heavy bombardment, a column of enemy infantry and tanks arrived from the Kajaki side. Although the Mujahideen groups assigned to cover this approach had left earlier, the terrain did not support tank movement. A Soviet Movement Support Detachment, MSD, used road construction machines and demolitions to open a way through the rocky approaches to Darawood for the tanks and APCs. The Soviets conducted air mobile insertions of soldiers on the heights overlooking the movement route to provide flank security. By this time, the Mujahideen were too widely dispersed for effective control. The contingents from Kandahar and Helmand were on opposite sides of the Helmand River and could not cross it. Their heavy weapons, such as the ZGU-1, Dishka, and surface-to-surface -surface rockets, were also positioned on both sides of the river. Their fires could not be coordinated. Five days after they killed the Soviet pilot on the Helmand River, the Mujahideen realized that they had lost command and control over the scattered detachments and could not deal with the two-pronged enemy advance. Therefore, the Mujahideen groups withdrew to their separate provincial bases by mountain paths. The Soviet column from Kajaki reached Darawood and recovered the body of the dead pilot. The Mujahideen had removed his documents earlier. As the Mujahideen pulled out, the column from Kandahar stopped at Kakrez and did not proceed to Darawood. It conducted a number of search and destroy actions in the area and returned. During the entire 45-day battle, the DRA militia incurred the heaviest losses. Mujahideen casualties were negligible. Mula Mulong states that the Mujahideen shot down a jet fighter and 10 helicopters. Commentary This Mujahideen siege was a conventional battle by a guerrilla force. It ended in a technical setback. Had the Mujahideen established an operation command system in the region, it would have been easier for them to coordinate their actions in terms of time and space. Lack of such an arrangement left a sizable Mujahideen force without operational support by other local groups, especially in blocking the movement of Soviet DRA reinforcements. Guerrilla forces are best employed for actions of short duration. Long extended operations, such as this siege, asks a lot of unpaid volunteers. The Mujahideen did assign detachments to cover the approaches to Darawood from the south, but as the siege continued, many of the fighters found more pressing business to attend to than sitting idly on a mountain. They departed one after another and left the approaches open. Both the Kajaki Axis and the Kotali Murcha Axis were very easy to block with a small detachment of determined fighters. If the Mujahideen had held their positions, they could have stopped the large columns of their enemy and celebrated a Mujahideen victory in Darawood. But, once again, the Mujahideen experience demonstrated their tactical and logistical limitations in maintaining control over large forces for an extended period of time. Most of the Mujahideen were not fighting on their home territory and therefore were less enthusiastic about remaining in stationary positions for an extended period of time while the Soviet Air Force attacked them. Air power, while seldom decisive in guerrilla war, played a major role in breaking the siege. Once the Mujahideen assumed static positions, the Soviet Air Force was able to delay the Mujahideen assault and gain the time needed for the ground forces to reach the battlefield.